Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak to you on a topic. <clears throat> Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. See, the Most High God of Israel have a warning to all of his creation. He says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. All of the ones that's lovers of the world, they seek the wisdom of the world, the pleasures of the world, the desires of this world. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this teaching and allow the precepts of the Most High God of Israel to minister unto us. And it's my prayer that someone will be edified through the scriptures and make that adjustments in their life to where they can turn and do the works that's meet for repentance. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this teaching. Once again, this is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. So we're going to start at the book of 2nd Edris, chapter 15 and verse 1 down to 3. He says, Behold, remember, speak thou in the ears of my people, the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, said the creator. I'm going to give you the words to say. I'm going to give you my doctrine. I want you to be a vessel and speak unto my people. He said, and cause them to be written in paper. For they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. Don't do it. That speak against thee. Don't let them trouble thee. Psalms. 83. And we hit verses one through five. It says, keep not thou silence, O Yahweh. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O Yahweh. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name meaning that the way of Israel may be no more in remembrance. All the things that you have called us to do. He said, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Not only that, we see here in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. It says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. This is what's going on. Second address, chapter 15, verses four through six. He said, for 
All the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, said the creator, I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. And their hurtful works are fulfilled. This is what's going on. All over this world. Wickedness and ungodliness. Evil works and deeds is going on all over the world. Second Maccabees chapter 6. Verse 13 down to 16. He said for. It is a token of his great goodness when wicked doers are not suffered any long time. But however, for with punish. For not as with other nations whom the creator patiently forbid to punish till they be come to the fullness of their sins. So deal it he with us. Lest that being come to the height of sin, afterwards he should take vengeance on us. And therefore he never withdrawed his mercy from us, and though he punish with adversity, yet do it he never forsake his people. So he's letting us know that he is patiently waiting to punish. Right here in verse 14. He said, whom the creator patiently forbear to punish. This is what he's going to do. Second address. Chapter 15. Verses 7 through 8. He says. Therefore said the creator. I will hold my tongue no more. As touching their wickedness. Which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me. And the souls of the unjust complained continually. They continually complaining about the suffering that they had to go through. And let's go over here and, and get that over here in Revelations. Chapter 6. In verse 9 and 10. He says, and when he had opened the fifth seal. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain. For the word of God. And for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O creator, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? See, they already know the most high going to put in work. He already showed us whom the creator patiently forbear to punish. But he's telling us woe to the world and them that dwell in. That's what he's telling us. Let's get some more information over here in Revelations chapter 20 and verse 4. He said, and I saw thrones and they set on, they set upon them and judgment was given unto them. 
And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of salvation and for the word of God and which had not the worship the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they live in reign with Christ a thousand years. Second address. Chapter 15 and verse 9. He said, and therefore said the creator, I will surely avenge them. He's going to avenge these that were slain for the word of God. Not only that, he said, and receive unto me all the innocent blood, meaning the innocent life from among them. This is what he's going to do. He's patiently forbearing to punish. Revelations. Six and eleven. He says, and the angels stood round about the throne. And about, oh, that's the wrong chapter. I'm sorry. That's seven. Revelation 6 and 11. He say, and white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season unto their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So he already know there's going to be other believers that's going to have to go through this. They're going to have to go through this suffering, being excluded from family members. Being called you in a cult. Being called you working for Satan because you're going against the church and the church family. They consider you as dead because of the wisdom that's coming out of your mouth. He say that they should rest yet for a little season until, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Second address. Chapter 15. Verse 10 down to 13. He said, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, in the land of bondage. I'm not going to suffer them to be dwelling there anymore. We see every Sunday those church doors open up. They are being led as flock to the slaughter. We see it going on all the time. He said, I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of bondage. This is what's going on. Some of you in bondage right now and don't even know it. This reminds me of a scripture over in Proverbs. We'll hit this and then we'll come right back. Proverbs chapter 21. 
in verse 16. He said, the man, meaning the male or female, that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. In other words, they're going to remain in that land of Egypt, in that house of bondage, that church assembly of bondage. You calling your pastor, your shepherd over your soul when Christ should be the shepherd over your soul. He's feeding you lies and deception. He said, behold, my people has led us flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. But however, I will bring them with a mighty hand, power, and a stretched out arm, and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Yahweh shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds shall fail through the blasting and hell and with a fearful constellation. This is what's going to go down. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. He say, Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. Baruch chapter 3. And we'll hit verse 26 down to 28. He says, there were the giants famous from the beginning that were of so great stature and so expert in war. Those did not the creator choose. Neither gave he the way of knowledge unto them. But however, they were destroyed because they had no wisdom. They was over there in Egypt and perish through their own foolishness. It was in the land of Egypt. It's what they was about. They was too busy holding God's people hostage. They being led as flock to the slaughter, feeding them with poison, venomous teachings that would not profit their soul anything. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 2. <clears throat> and we hit verses 1 down to 22. He said, for the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious. And in death, and in the death of a man, there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. For we are born at all adventure and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been for the breath in our nostrils is as smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart which being extinguished our body shall be turned 
into ashes. And our spirit shall vanish as comparison to soft air. And our name shall be forgotten in time. And no man shall have our works in remembrance. And our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud. And shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun. And overcome with the heat thereof. For our time is a very shadow that passes away. And after our end, there is no returning. For it is fast sealed. So that no man come in again. Come on, therefore, for that reason. Let us enjoy the good things that are present. And let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments and let no flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place. For this is our portion. And our lot is this. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Let our strength be the law of justice for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Therefore, let us lie and wait for the righteous because he is not for our turn and he is clean contrary to our doings. He upbraided us with our offending the law and objected to our infamy, the transgressions of our education. He professed to have the knowledge of God and he called himself the child of the creator. He was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us even to behold, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. We are esteem of him as counterfeits. He abstained from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounced it the end of the just to be blessed and make it his boast that Yahweh is his father. Let us see if his words be true and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. For if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Let us examine him with the despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Let us condemn him with a shameful death for by his own sin he shall be respected. Such things they did imagine and were deceived for their own wickedness have blinded them. As for the mysteries of Yahweh, they knew them not, neither hoped they for the, the wages of righteousness, nor discerned 
a reward for blameless souls. See, it had not been that long ago where you had families, husband, wives, and the little kids were stand and take pictures as this Hebrew body was hanging from the tree. They would stand and take pictures as this Hebrew body was on fire, burning. They would stand and take pictures holding the limbs of a Hebrew body. They would make postcards and send them out. Hadn't been that long ago. And it said, let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. We read and write in the scripture the mindset of people that do ungodly things. In verse 16, they say, we are esteem of him as counterfeits. He abstained from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounced it the end of the just to be blessed and make it his boast that God is his father. It take a certain type of individual to be willing to do this to another human being, another creature that God have made. A hang a rope around their neck and put their body up on a tree and watch the life go right from out of them. And then on top of that, bring them down and then burn them. And take all of the family members and smile as you posing for a photo. It take a certain type individual to be willing to do these gruesome acts to another one of God's creatures that he have created. He said, let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. So it didn't matter if you was young. It didn't matter if you was old. Or in between. It's going to put in some work on you. Second address. Chapter 15 and. Verse. 56 down to 63. He says, Like as thou has done unto my chosen, said the creator, even so shall God do unto thee and shall deliver thee into mischief. Thy children shall die of hunger and thou shall fall through the sword. Thy city shall be 
broken down and all dying shall perish with the sword in the field. They that be in the mountain shall die of hunger and eat their own flesh and drink their own blood for very hunger of bread and thirst of water. Thou as unhappy shall come through the sea and receive plagues again. And in the passage, they shall rush on the idol city and shall destroy some portion of that land and consume part of thy glory and shall return to Babylon that was destroyed. And thou shall be cast down by them as stubble and they shall be unto thee as fire and shall consume thee and thy cities thy land and thy mountains all thy woods and thy fruitful trees shall they burn up with fire and we know this is talking about people thy children shall they carry away captive and look what thou hast. They shall spoil it and mar the beauty of thy face. Isaiah chapter 5 In verses 14 through 16. He said, therefore, for that reason, hell have enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoice it shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down. And the mighty man, the powerful man, the one that have all the power shall be humbled. And the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the spirit of God of hosts shall be exalted in judgment. And Yahweh that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. This is what's going to go down. And there's nothing that man and his devices can do about it. Second address. Chapter 15 and verse 14 down. 27. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draw it nigh. And one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hand. For there shall be sedition among men and in invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed. And men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. 
but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread, the lack of knowledge and for great tribulation. Behold, said Yahweh, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, in Lebanon, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. <laughs> Looking at another world war. They all going to turn themselves one against another. And repay the things that are that they have done to them. So in, in other words, they're going to wipe each other out. He say, like as they do yet this day unto my chosen... So will I do also and recompense in their bosom, thus said the creator Yahweh. So it ain't no getting around this. This prophecy will come to pass. Some folks, if you want to call it World War III, that's, that's up to you. I don't care nothing about that type of language. Only thing I'm focusing on is what the word of God said. He said, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. <laughs> He's going to put this in motion. He's going to set this up. And he said, like as they do Yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also in recompensing their bosom, thus said the creator Yahweh. My right hand, my power, my strength shall not spare the sinners. And my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood, meaning innocent life upon the earth. The fire is gone forth from his wrath and have consumed the foundations of the earth and the sinners like the straw that is kindled. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, said the creator. I will not spare them Go your way, ye children, from the power. Defile not my sanctuary. Mm. For the creator knoweth all them that sin against him. And therefore delivered he them unto death and destruction. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth and ye shall remain in them. Mm. For Yahweh shall not deliver you because ye have sinned against him. But these are some strong words. righteous judgment it's prophecy that will be fulfilled woe to the world and them that dwell therein Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 2 down to 8 he said, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, said the Spirit of God. 
I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And we know this fishes of the sea is talking about people. We already know this. He said, and I will cut off man from off the land, said the Spirit of God. I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place. So all of the ones that's worshiping Satan in his Prophets that teach it lies in these church buildings. And he's telling us in the name of the chairman with the priests. And them that worship the hosts of heaven upon the housetops. And them that worship and that swear by the spirit of God and that swear by Malchim. And them that are turned back from the spirit of God and those that have not sought the spirit of God nor acquired for him. He said, hold thy peace at the presence of the creator Yahweh for the day of the spirit of God is at hand. For the spirit of God have prepared a sacrifice. He have bid his guests. And it shall come to pass in the day of the spirit of God's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. In other words, you got this other covering that is not Christ. You trusting in a word that cannot save you. Matter of fact, let's show this. Let's just show it over here in uh, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 15 and 16 so you can see it in real time he said the ancient and honorable he is the head and the prophet that teach it lies he is the tail for the leaders of this people cause them to err and they that are led of them are destroyed he's telling us family He's got an issue with the ones that follow after these leaders. Over here, not only that, in Ezekiel chapter 16 and verses, uh, I'll hit 23 down to 25. He said, and it came to pass after all thy wickedness, woe, Woe unto thee, said the creator of Yahweh, that thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place. You built this church building. It has made thee in high place in every street. It don't matter what city, what town you go to, you're going to see this chapel. You're going to see this building and it's going to have the house of God, the church of God, the House of worship, this, that, that, and the other. It's going to have God on there somewhere. Say you have made the in high place in every street. Thou has built thy high place at every head of the way and has made thy beauty. You made the law that I put in your heart and your mind to be abhorred, to be hated. And has opened thy feet, thy desires to everyone that passed by and multiplied thy whoredoms. See, this is what we was guilty of doing. Going in these places of worship, worshiping a God, but not our creator. And he told us so many times. That he don't dwell in buildings made by hands. He tells us here in Acts chapter 7 verse 48. How be it the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands. As said the prophet. So this strange appeal is the reason why I went those places. 
to show what this strange apparel looks like over here in Zephaniah 1 and 8. He said, And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. You got that strange covering. This is what he going to do. Not only that, in verse 17 and 18, he said, And I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Spirit of God. And their blood, meaning their life, shall be poured out as dust. And their flesh as dung, as doo-doo. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Spirit of God's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Sirach. Chapter 39, verse 28 down to 32. He says, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force. And appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. Therefore, from the beginning, I was resolved and thought upon these things and have left them in writing. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 2, verse 23 and 24. He says, For Yahweh created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity nevertheless through envy of the devil came death into the world and they that hold of his side do find it you're gonna hold to his ways and his doings and the things that he's about you're gonna find it psalms chapter 9 verse 15 down to 20. He says, The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made, and the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Spirit of God is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higion, Salah. The wicked shall be turned into hell 
and all the nations that forget Yahweh. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor, the one that's lacking knowledge, shall not perish forever. Arise, O Spirit of God, and let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judge in thy sight. Put them in fear. Please, O Spirit of God, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Salah. So family, he's telling us Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. He's telling us it's going to be recompense for the things that was done unto his chosen. Oh, it may look like folks is getting by now. He says it's going to be recompense. For the ones that have sinned against him and went against his commandments. Seem like everything is peachy and rosy now. But when the most high pays his visitation. The nations may know themselves. To be but men. They, they are nothing but men. We are nothing but men. In this last verse. In verse 16. I'm going to just close out with. He said the spirit of God is known. By the judgment. Which he executed. The wicked is snared. In the work of his own hands. Higion. Salah. So family, I hope and pray something was said to open up your understanding. We see a prophecy that's going down in the scripture that will come to pass. He already telling you for the cause is going to be an effect. For the action, it's going to be a reaction. It's going to be a visitation and a recompense for all of the wicked deeds upon this earth. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. So I'm going to say a happy Sabbath to everyone as we begin this Sabbath morning. I want to encourage you to continue to follow Christ. Let him be your shepherd. Let him lead you and guide you into the pathway of righteousness. Be that empty vessel that he can fill up with his word, with his spirit, with his power, with his wisdom, with his knowledge, and with his understanding. You follow his lead. You can never go off. Don't be shaken by mighty winds, men and women trying to tell you what you need to do. Allow Christ to lead and guide you. So I'm going to say a shalom to everyone until we meet again. Shalom.